Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to 10 things from the 80s we'll never do again. The 80s as a decade it really uh, intrigues me, you know, the fashion, the music, the movies that came out of it, it seemed like a really fun time to be alive. I would have definitely had a lot of fun if I was around in that decade, it just seemed like things were just, it reminds me, it like, because I, I have like faint memories of the 90s and I imagine the 80s was probably everything the 90s had but just, I don't know, even better maybe or maybe worse in some areas, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. Welcome to MTV. Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things from the 80s we'll never do again. It's just the right time, just the right place. For this list, we're looking at popular trends from the 80s that are now unfathomable. What's something else socks. from the 1980s that no one does anymore? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, get glamour shots. Glamour photography has been around a long time. In the 80s, young kids would pop into the glamour studio at the mall and have an extra fancy photo session. There was typically at least one mm. shot with some stylish hat and the same recognizable backgrounds used for almost every customer. Clients were often accessorized with heavy makeup and clothes far too extravagant for them to wear on a daily basis. Throw in a feather boa and some gloves and you've ticked off every glamour box from the 1980s. Glamorous pictures are still taken today, just minus the 80s accessories and massive hair. Hmm. Number 9. Watch vid- I reckon like that would have been, you would have seen so many of these glamour shots on dating profiles. Because, you know, it seems like a fun, it's, it's better than just your standard photo of you, you know, at a picnic or at a pub or something like that. Those on MTV after school. Announcing the latest achievement in home entertainment. The power of sight. Video. The power of sound. MTV Music Television. On MTV. August 1st, 1981, Music Television, or MTV for short, launched on the airwaves. Video, Music channels had been tried before, but MTV found its niche with younger audiences. Kids would come home from school, flip on the TV, and watch countless music videos of bands they had heard on the radio. Turn it on! Leave it on! America! See the music you want to see! I want my MTV. All right. Soon, it became every musician's goal to have their newest videos shown on the network. The format was copied time and time again by other countries, but MTV was definitively at its heyday in the 80s. Music really? videos are now mainly seen on YouTube, while MTV-style stations run more reality-style shows. Go to a Man, MTV, we used to watch so much of it. Like, do you guys remember when there used to be MTV bass? for like hip hop and R&B. And there was um, like MTV dance for just dance music. There was MTV rock. Like we used to just, and they, it just used to be like music video after music video after music video. Those were the days. Video rental store. Video might've killed the radio star, but it didn't take too long for streaming to obliterate the video store. The 1980s saw the VCR land in countless homes across the globe. And with it, video rental outlets began thriving. Wow! Wow! Not only could you rent the latest films, but kids had access to dozens of video games they could try at home. They have lots and lots of kids stuff for us. It was a welcome <laughs> surprise, although at first, movie studios opposed the entire concept of at-home viewing. Despite their decline, it's important to remember that if these stores had not existed, companies like Netflix may never have been born. This is true. After all, they started as a DVD rental company. Netflix. All the movies you want, 20 bucks a month, and no late fees. Number seven, do Jazzercise. Man, Netflix, they're starting to get on my nerves. Like, it feels like every sort of three to six months, they're raising the price of their subscription. And, you know, the not being able to share passwords anymore. That's just, it's like, and they've started to run ads. I think they've off, they're offering like a, an ad version. It's basically becoming cable TV. It, like Netflix is becoming everything it said it didn't want to be. That said, there are some good shows on Netflix. Three Body Problem is, is really good. 
While visiting the aforementioned video store, you might have picked up a jazzercise tape. Workout fitness videos were all the rage during the 80s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, last eight. Jane Fonda had her own series, as did Richard Simmons. A lesser-known name might be that of Judy Shepard Missett, who founded the Jazzercise franchise in the late 1960s. While teaching dance, she learned that her students cared more about looking good than dancing well. You'll be happy to know that while you're busy having fun dancing up a storm, your body will be getting a truly effective fat-burning aerobic workout. That's when she had her proverbial light bulb moment. <laughs> the, the movement and the outfit as well. It's like a, a swimsuit with with leggings. She franchised the concept in the 80s, which meant the workouts became available across the U.S. Like many other fitness fads, Jazzercise is still around, but it is long past its peak. The bigger the circle, the thinner the waist. If you want a boogie, get down on the dance floor. Let's go! Number six, you know what? I, I love her energy. Tape. I love it. If you dig around your house, you might be able to find one of these. It's hard to fathom now, but mixtapes were pretty important back in the 1980s. At the time, people had to buy entire albums, so they'd often end up with dozens of tapes that only had a few songs they really liked. Music lovers would therefore record their favorite tracks onto their mix. After some waiting, they'd have the best collection of tunes from their catalog all in one place. And making someone a mixtape was just about the most romantic thing you could do. Yet with the introduction of single song purchases the and eventually iPods. streaming services, Man, playlists that. took over. Number five, attend. Yeah, there was a guy at my school called Grant. He used to sell like a uh, mixtapes where you could put 10 songs that you wanted. And I think he would charge a pound for these. And uh, I remember it just being like so amazed I could have my own songs like that I wanted to listen to. This was really like, I was just like maybe 10 or nine or something like that. And then I think I got my first iPod when I was about 11. I got the iPod mini. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Memories, man. Pox parties. $15 to infect your kids. Now featuring the Pox Box. Pox Box not recommended for pregnant or nursing women. As with any disease box, results may vary. They are far less common now and certainly highly frowned upon. But there was a time when this was a real thing. Just well, they actually the way, first right? started in the pre-vaccine era. The symptoms of the chickenpox tend to be more severe in older children, adolescents, and adults. So the idea was you really wanted to affect, have your children become affected with the illness Get it out early. of the way. Exactly. Normally, chickenpox runs through your system and you never get it again. So the logic was to catch it as a child when it's far less dangerous. <laughs> Parents would take never infected kids and put them in the same room as someone with the pox in the hopes that everyone would get sick. It's some kind of parental conspiracy. Our parents are trying to kill us or something. This practice fell out of favor in the mid 90s when a vaccine for the disease became available. But although pox parties are a thing of the past, some families still have such gatherings for other viruses. You know, when people want to take that risk with their children to go to these parties and let them give a natural immunity, you know, they're, they're, they're you, know, you know, rolling the dice, essentially. Number four, where- This is the thing, like, <clears throat> obviously there's a lot of science and information about, about, you know, vaccines, but there are going to be people who would rather have a natural uh, solution. And, you know, who, who, who are we to, to judge them for wanting to do it that way versus, you know, the standard way? So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't really have a position. Older what do you guys think? In clothes. God, Veronica, drool much? His name is Jason Dean. Football players have been sporting shoulder pads for ages. The fashionable version was born in the 1930s. Although the trend continued here and there, the 1980s saw the square shoulder look for women make a huge comeback. I had shoulder pads on everything small. My small dog walks around with shoulder pads. I think everyone should my wear shoulder pads. I have them in my pajamas. Right. My dog, cup of coffee, New York, yoik. You could take a simple t-shirt, add pads, belt it, look terrific. It was thought to create a more outlined shape and helped define the business suit look of the time. Popular TV shows like Dynasty showcased high-class women wearing the notable look, making it all the more desirable. You're bluffing, Crystal, you know you are. 
Am I? Watch me. But much like parachute pants, it is a clothing trend that later died off. We'll still catch glimpses of shoulder pads from time to time, but they certainly don't carry the same weight as before. Yeah. Number three, are. get. I, I, I guess it does give you like a, a good silhouette having broad shoulders, but you don't want it to be comically wide. Like, you know, you're some kind of, you know, superhero. That's from Columbia House. When Columbia House first the came sound. along, they changed the music buying game. For just a penny, they would send you roughly eight albums if you joined their club. It seemed like a revolutionary, cheap, and easy way to get lots of music very quickly. Just find our ad. It's in your Sunday paper. Pick any 11 records or tapes for a penny and see how to get even more music free. But things soured just as fast. Members didn't necessarily realize they'd signed up to automatically be sent cassettes they didn't want. And they were on the hook to pay higher than retail value for them if they didn't opt out in time. If why do companies always take the piss like this? You know, why? You know, they always try and squeeze every pound and dollar out of you, don't they? As do Americans that. say, they try and nickel and dime you. I'm, or if you just forgot, you would be shipped that record and of course you would be billed for it. Needless to say, it didn't take long before the company's billing tactics caught up with them. Number two, skip seatbelts. In yep, most parts of the world today, people automatically put their seatbelts on when entering a car. It They've been proven to, to like save that. lives time and time again. Yet in the 1980s, buckling up wasn't as commonplace. I oppose it on the basis that it replaces the free will of the individual with the desires of the state. Many boomers <laughs> and Generation Xers have stories of riding around town without having to put theirs on. It was a time when safety... Yeah, I remember as a kid, <clears throat> as a young kid, we never used to put our seatbelts on. Like, thinking about it now is actually insane. You know, driving on the motorway, doing 70, 75, 80 miles an hour with your kids in the back and nobody's wearing a seatbelt. Like, pfft. I mean, yeah, times, times change, don't they? As were far less strict, and consumers had a bit more choice as to how safe they could be. I was sh totally shocked that Alberta would pass a seatbelt law. It, it just didn't seem like the kind of thing that, that people in cattle country would, would take. Even the requirement for bike helmets didn't come into play until many years later. As the decade moved along, seatbelts became the norm and are now a standard part of our driving routine. Encourage the people you care about to buckle up. Let's work together to save lives. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. What's number, number one? Number one, buy cigarettes with a note from your parents. Wow. In 2021, you can expect to get carded when buying cigarettes. But if you roll the calendar back to the 1980s, all you needed to make such a purchase was a note from your parents. Did they need to put like their number, their, the phone number on the notes, so the person behind the counter could ring up and double check? Or could you literally write your own note <laughs> just to get your own cigarettes? It sounds baffling today, but it's true. Well, they're not for me, they're for my parents. My mom gave me this list of notes, she even signed it. Crossing the street and going into the gas station, kids simply had to show a slip to the cashier that said they had permission to get the product. Often, the workers would know the family, so sales were made all too easily. Obviously, this practice is now long gone, as far tighter restrictions have been put in place. Do you agree with our picks? Crazy. Check out this other recent clip Crazy. from Watch Mojo. As expected, things were a lot more relaxed. You know, things were, I suppose we didn't have the, the, the data. We didn't have the information. Like the seatbelt thing, I'm sure it took decades and decades of studies to determine whether seatbelts would reduce uh, fatality, severe injuries, and things like that. So we had to wait until we had that information before they started passing that those laws. Um, the, the cigarette one is just uh, unbelievable. I suppose, did some people call, call home to double check whether the parent had indeed asked them to buy cigarettes for them? Or could you literally forge your own note to get your own cigarettes? 
I mean, yeah, it's just unbelievable. These days, I think, uh, you know, the UK government's planning to ban cigarettes outright. Just look how much of a difference in, in 40 years. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.